so very good evening to all of you friends we are going to have today a very very eminent personality with us who is going to provide his perspective and a very very important uh, uh, information about the vaccinations which is planned related to covid 19 in india so his paper is already being published and it is available on the insa website but being an ieee fellow we also thought that it will be all the more uh, beneficial for our ieee bangalore section members if we are able to hear him live and uh, we will know his perspective uh, from the first hand so uh, professor biswanam has and he will give his uh, views on orchestrating the world's largest covid-19 vaccinations in india most of you know him but uh, i can see there are few students also have joined so i for him it is all the more important and it is my privilege to introduce uh, professor n viswanatham who is an insa senior scientist in the computer science and automation at the indian institute of science bangalore he has several prestigious positions before professor viswanatham was professor and executive director for the center of excellence global logistics and manufacturing strategies in the indian school of business isb during 2006 to 2011 he was deputy executive director of the logistics institute in asia pacific and also professor in the department of mechanical and production engineering at the national university of singapore during 1998 to 2005 before 1998 he was fellow chair professor at iisc bangalore he is the recipient of 1996 iisc humaning award for excellence in research he was conferred with the distinguished alumni award in the year 2009 by the council of indian institute of science he was awarded the 2012 professor s k mitra memorial award by the indian national academy of engineering Krishna Triple E, a fellow of IN, uh, Indian National Science Academy, Indian Academy of Sciences, Indian National, and the Third World Academy of Sciences. So all the academies he is a fellow. Professor Vishwanathan has made significant contributions in the areas of manufacturing, logistics. He has authored 40 journal and top tier conference papers. He has written several thought leadership papers on logistics, manufacturing, services in India. Some of them are sponsored by CII and FICCI, and most of them are published by industry magazines. His book on performance modeling of automated manufacturing systems is followed worldwide. and is reprinted 6 times his new book ecosystem aware global supply chain management addresses path breaking methodology for redesign of global supply chains integrating performance risk innovation and coordination and execution his current research efforts are on food security supply chain transparency using smart contracts and design of his models he mentored several startups in the logistics and supply chain areas so we are very honored to have you sir and it is our privilege to hear you i think uh, we for lot of entities in his presentation sir over to you yeah thank thank you very much uh, 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 dr pondit uh, for inviting me for this talk i also want to thank uh, others like kbs hari and others who actually uh, uh, told me that i should give this talk for i to believe members and others 
uh, in the Bangalore section. And uh, I was basically uh, a bit hesitant uh, 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 after this talk. Let me tell you a brief history. I wrote this paper about a month back, and things are going so fast that, you know, at the time when I wrote this paper, the vaccine was not there, and people were not even thinking of vaccinations and all that. But now the vaccines have been, three vaccines have been uh, this one, and vaccination has started in UK and US and all that. So that's where my uh, presentation uh, is uh, valid, but you will find that a lot of the things that what I am saying are all orchestrated also by uh, some of these presentations when I watch the TV. So let's look at, I'm talking of India. So let's look, India, it has eight union territories, 28 states, 14 languages, 1.38 billion people, 648, 867 villages, and 65% of population live in villages. And the contagion has hit towns and villages because people have traveled, and lockdowns affected the livelihoods of people. So this is the very brief summary of what it is about India. And now you want to vaccinate the entire country. Yes. So my contents are, I'll just first talk about pharma supply chain. Vaccination is a product in the pharma supply chain. And then talk about vaccination supply chain. In other words, what is that that is involved? in the vaccination process and vaccination pro pro platform for the country. In other words, when India is trying to have these vaccinations, what is the what is the kind of organizations? And then we'll conclude this. And finally, I will add some research problems because today it is, the, it is this uh, COVID-19, but earlier it was SARS, earlier it was influenza. And here it, uh, it was HIV and so on. So disruptions occur more frequently. And it is important to be ready. So what are the research problems that you should see that for the so that you are future ready? So what is the for those people who are not uh, supply chain people? There is a supply chain network behind every product, let it be auto or pharma or electronics or the shirt, pants that you wear and so on. So it is a network of independent companies. In other words, if you take auto supply chain, there are 30,000 companies involved in this from all over the world currently. If you take pharma, it is about 10 to 15,000 companies which are there. And similarly in electronics and others. So they do design, manufacture, warehousing, retail, finance, service and maintenance and all these things. So how do you manage 30,000 companies? So that is the problem with the supply chain networks. Focus is now after the COVID result is all deglobalization. That is people want to be local and they want to be local sourcing. And most supply chain are affected except food and pharma. Most of the supply chains and service chains like travel, like uh, 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 the auto and other supply, even electronic supply chains, they're all severely affected. So if you look at a diagram, you have supplier, you have manufacturers, you have distributors, and you have finally the customers. But how do you transfer, supposing the supplier is in China and the manufacturer is in Singapore, how do you transport it? So you have to transport during either ships or, uh, or trucks and so on, depending on uh, the, uh, the, whether it is land or sea or something that is called business to business logistics. And similarly, you have from manufacturer to distributor, also business to business logistics. And from distributor to the customer is business to customer logistics. So there is basically a lot of these companies like manufacturers, suppliers, customers, and logistics companies 
and all these companies need to be financed. So that is you the finance companies and all that. So their supply chain has a lot of companies. Who, if you look at, uh, for example, the pharma supply chain, you have raw material suppliers, you have finished product, packaging, distribution, distributor, hospitals, clinics, and pharmacies, and finally the patients. Now here, I mean, of course, in the pharma supply chain, one problem that currently people are having is most of these raw material comes from China. That is where this one, others have the mining, they can mine the raw material, but to process it, it takes time. So most of the pharma supply chains got affected if you don't want to import anything from, from abroad. So what are the business processes involved in the pharma supply chain? One is, of course, the product development. That is, in the case of vaccine, they develop the vaccine. And then clinical trials. I mean, you must have heard about the clinical trials, 95%, 70% efficient efficacy and all that. But afterwards, you manufacture the, these vaccines or the pharma products or vitamins or vitamins and so on, and finally distribution and so on. Now here, the product development is the one that uh, I had, we had papers um, uh, in the year 1998, where how do you actually accelerate the product development? Because it usually takes uh, five years and the product development and clinical trials also take five years and manufacturing is very easy. Once you have a product and it's uh, this one, the manufacturing takes very, uh, a very little time. And of course, it has to be distributed via logistics. But in the pharma uh, supply chain, one important thing about the delivery mechanisms is the, the temperature as well as the time because the, 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 the medicines or the pharma products, they expire and they are time sensitive. So basically let the clinical from test tube to the market, if you look at the clinical supply chains, the first clinical test uh, testing is done uh, in the research and development. They test with the animals like rats, pigs, and so on. And afterwards, there are three phases of clinical trials. The first phase, they try for several months, mainly safety of the vaccine or the medicine. And phase two, size in hundreds, takes several months to two years, mainly the effectiveness. And then phase three is the purpose, safety, dosage, and effectiveness is all tested in this. Now, in the uh, uh, vaccine also, it has gone through all these, these, these stages and so on. So, uh, under the distribution process of pharma healthcare puts a demand on the operation of the logistics. For example, vaccines, uh, for uh, the, uh, the Pfizer vaccine requires minus 70 degrees centigrade and cold chains have to be built for such low temperatures. Usually our house fridges and all that are minus 20 degrees centigrade. And most of these warehouses here like this are all minus 20, minus 30 degrees centigrade. And also the, the distribution also when you, when these vaccines are given or they're distributed, then they are kits that are made and are available so that the temperature is maintained. So if you want to map the pharma supply chain, you can do it like the supply chain has drug discovery, manufacturers, clinical trials, pharmas, and patients, and you have resources. And the resources are, for example, they have to prevent counterfeit, there are logistics, there is the, the big data and the medical things and so on. And also there are institutions and regulations, state and government and WHO, FDA and hospitals and so on, R&D labs. And finally, the delivery has to be done through cold chain, tests, returns, doctors, staff, hospitals, pharmacies, storage and security and so on. This is what I call 
the ecosystem of the pharma ecosystem. So once you map the ecosystem, in this one page, you can find out what is all required to manufacture the vaccines, right from the drug discovery design to the pharmacies to the hospitals, and also what are the resources needed, what are the rules, regulations you need to follow, and how do you deliver this, this vaccine or, or the pharma product to the customers. But one problem that uh, most of these uh, pharma products have is 30% of the pharma products are fake. This is true with, uh, with respect to us. So all organizations, including WHO, are concerned about the counterfeit drugs entering the market. Regulators and industry want to ensure the supply chains are safe, effective, and affordable. And to stop counterfeit product entering the supply chain, you have to screen the suppliers, logistics providers, and this takes a lot of And cyber attacks on vaccine manufacturers is already reported. In other words, now is they go to this uh, Pfizer and other websites and they download the, the content that is there in the vaccine so that they can manufacture outside and, and so on. So basically the counterfeit can be the same, but not from the same manufacturer or it can be, you know, instead of vitamins, it can be sugar and so on. So basically counterfeit challenge is one of the very big things that this one. So for the counterfeit, there are, I mean, I must, and I know you must have heard about the blockchains. There are vac blockchain startups that through, because vaccines go through a lot of companies. As I said, any pharma company, it goes through 10,000, uh, different companies from when it reaches from the design to the hospital. The vaccines go through a lot of these companies and they are temperature and time sensitive and often spoiled because they're del not delivered on time, expiry date. At the wholesaler and distributor level, the serial number of the vaccine or drug should tell you the entire journey. Is it possible to have, once you buy something, is it possible to show your, your uh, show it to the, the drug to your cell phone? Is it possible? Will it tell where the whole manufacturing is done? There is a company, Statwick. It uses Internet of Things and blockchain for every step of the product journey and provide complete transparency. <coughs> UNICEF has a smart chain initiative. It uses start, start week. So basically, if you want to stop counterfeit, then one has to use the blockchain. So that is about the pharma brief idea about the pharma supply chain. But uh, one thing that I would like to mention as one of the research problems is the the vaccine, not only vaccine, the entire pharma supply chain, particularly in India, with the deglobalization, deurbanization, and all that, it needs to be redone. And the supply chain needs a lot of a lot of effort from the youngsters. So in the COVID vaccine, if you want to look at, usually vaccines take five years for clinical tests and FDA approvals. But people are saying digitalization and international collaboration helped early rise in the race. Vaccination already started in UK and USA. Monitoring for after effects for both short term and after and after some time is a must. Now there are uh, a lot of I'm going to go through uh, the process a little bit afterwards, but. As soon as the vaccination is done, there are some short-term effects like fever, rashes, and all that. And after some time, then there could be some other serious problems. Everyone in the entire world of population wants to get vaccinated to move around freely. People are looking for looking forward to the, this vaccination so that they are tired of staying at home or working from home uh, and so on. So not going to uh, 
uh, various uh, places and not traveling and all that. So, vaccinations are for immunity, not for cure of disease people. In other words, if one has COVID disease, can vaccination cure it? The answer is no. So, but once people who have had COVID, can they be vaccinated? Well, these are all questions that need some answers. So vaccination is for immunity only, not for cure, not for cure. Now you can see that the whole world is waiting for these vaccinators. So the entire world is waiting for this. So that is where there is a lot of serious this one. Because if you take any other thing, then you know a part of the people. Uh, now this kind night of people are not interested, but now the entire world is this. Now vaccine candidates are Pfizer, minus 70 degrees, Moderna minus 20 degrees, Oxford, AstraZeneca 2 to 8 degrees, Johnson and Johnson. Now these are all the temperatures that uh, this vaccine gets. Now. What is the vaccination idea of the vaccination value chain? Providing the right vaccine to the right patient at the right time, at the right place, in the right dosage, at the right price. There are six rights in this. So I don't know how many of these rights can be uh, uh, secured in the, uh, in the current vaccination. So, if you are conducting mass vaccination campaigns, need to execute high quality vaccination under safe conditions to health staff and as well as the community. Now, one thing with COVID is that it is contact tracing that creates problems. So, when people go for vaccination, there should not be, uh, you know, contact tracing there. Vaccination is to be done two times with the same vaccine in a period of 20 to 26 days. Now, usually vaccines are done only once, but here the vaccination has to be done two times and inventory data records start to be maintained. I mean, there are a lot of questions that people are asking. If I am in Bangalore for the first vaccine, can I go to Delhi and get the second vaccine and so on? So these are all if I if I get uh, Pfizer vaccine for the first dose, can I get AstraZeneca for the second vaccine? And so on. So there are lots of questions that people are asking. Adequate human resources, cold chain capacity, logistics and transport, syringes, masks, etc. are needed. Train the health workers and vaccinators to strictly adhere to infection prevention and control recommendations. This is needs training and establish an effective monitoring system that captures adverse reactions following the vaccines. Now, here is it's very important because you are doing the vaccinations here on vaccines which are done for the first time. So the entire world is being, there is no uh, uh, cases before which you can use here. So the entire world is being done simultaneously. So how do you how do you capture the adverse reactions following the vaccine? And then there should be a, a monitoring system. Seeing customers for health conditions prior to the admission. If screening shows good, proceed with vaccination. If it shows COVID positive, refers to the service. Or if it shows, as somebody was saying today, that if people were vaccinated for some malaria or something and they had some problems, they should not be vaccinated with the current vaccine and so on. So there are a lot of opinions that the doctors say here and there, but one has to be careful. Establish exclusive vaccination sessions for people with pre-existing medical conditions such as high blood pressure, heart disease, respiratory disease, diabetes, and so on. And particularly with women, can this be given for pregnant women? 
can basically be a breastfeeding woman. So all types of questions are arising here. Vaccinator should perform hand hygiene and after after each recipient and use masks and PPS. Vaccine distribution should be well optimized to reduce the wastage. WHO reports 50% wastage uh, wastage of vaccines. That's either because temperature or time or you know because it has to travel from one place to other. So there will be going to be a lot of wastage in this. Let's look at this. Now you have the customers who are coming for the vaccination. You have the cold chain, which is containing the, the vaccines and vaccinated customer goes out. So I have vaccination centers with doctors, medical staff and all that. And there are just masks and PPEs here. And there is first is health testing. Once the health testing is done, if you are healthy, then there is vaccination is done. If you are not healthy, COVID positive or BP sugar or something, then you are sent out. Then afterwards, there is monitoring uh, done. And there is also waste disposal and monitoring. It goes to if monitoring shows some emergency, there is hospital and so on. It goes. So this is the vaccination value chain. Now here, the health testing. Usually COVID tests take two days, right? So can all this be done simultaneously here or at one place? Now this monitoring, now they are saying they will, you have to stay there for half an hour. But what if, if something comes after two days? Because there are a lot of this kind of problems that comes and for that case, and also these are all distributed. They are at the same place or all of them at different places. This is the question that need to be answered. But right now, people are thinking there is no health testing that vaccination, go for vaccination and wait for half an hour and get out. But that may not be the correct thing to do here. So digital records of all this and being in touch with the customers through APIs, application programming interfaces is very important here. So I mean, people are suggesting you should use Aadhaar card and all that, and also note the, the, the cell phone number and other things. This is the orchestrator here. Orchestrator is like in music, we see the orchestrator who will be showing his hands and asking people, but he doesn't do anything. But there are clients, there are service providers, patient for testing, vaccine center, medical staff, vaccine suppliers, emergency, health insurance, and all that, medical records, and data center on the cloud. Who is this orchestrator? This orchestrator, of course, I don't know what the what the, the government is thinking. This orchestrator should be somebody who knows all this and who is in touch with the patients and who can who knows about the vaccination chain and the participants and so on. So what are the talents needed? Deep domain knowledge, understanding of practices and processes, making sure there is no transmission at the center. Trusted relationship with customers, hospitals, startups, service providers, government staff, etc. And capabilities to continually manage and redesign processes. In other words, if something happens and things are to be, then they should or should have the authority to do that. <coughs> so the vaccination ecosystem you can show that uh, vaccination service chain, and you can see the resources <coughs> and the regulations and the final delivery goal chain and pre-testing, post-testing, and so on. You can, in one page, you can see what the entire ecosystem is. 
Now, you have the vaccination. How do you measure, you know, if you take any, uh, any particular product, do you want to measure its effectiveness? So how do you measure the effectiveness of uh, uh, this one? So you measure vaccine effectiveness by the immunity, the number of people who get the immunity, number of vaccinated, and that there is no transmission, and public waiting time, people like not have to wait anything and so on. So, but a lot of people ask the question, there are other actors here, like the cold chain and also the doctors, and uh, there is uh, other regulators and so on. What do they get? They get <coughs> um, the data of, uh, sorry, data from the pharma uh, supply chain for their for this one, as well as they are paid money by the government and so on. So, but if you take a uh, look at the vaccination platform for the country, vaccination platform for the country. So you want to deliver vaccination for all. So central government assigns the responsibility to states can follow the organization models for general elections or for author card delivery and so on. So people are suggesting general elections, but there is one difference between general elections and the vaccination. In the general elections, you may choose to go or no go to elect, but in the vaccination, everybody is interested in the vaccination. Each state selects vaccination sites in cities and villages and each site will have medical staff, vaccines, syringes, and so on, and cold storage, hospitals, medical college nearby. Data collection, patients profile, time of vaccination, after effects, et cetera, algorithms to suggest if vaccination is advisable or not, what post care is needed to be developed. So these are all basically if the algorithms are available. There are some companies which are having this, this kind of algorithms and so on. So the uh, central government has all this government responsibilities. Set up a vaccination commission like electoral commission of India, set up a vaccination committee, identify participants, articulate their roles, responsibilities, contributions, and interactions of friend. So how do you, if, if there is some doctor he doesn't want to go, then how who is going to be responsible for this? So focus on partners with the value chain and also of strategic importance, like uh, you know ICMR, WHO, and all that. You have to basically have partnership with this and build effective communication, collaboration, and coordination among partners. It is important to all this set and track performance metrics related to vaccination safety and service levels for each vaccination centers. Set up governance and agile partnerships to respond quickly for the risks from various sources with mitigation strategies. Now, there are a lot of risks that can happen. A truck can fail. The temperature can, can, be, can be less or there can be a fake vaccine. Uh, somebody, some uh, uh, doctors can be sick. So there are several things that can happen. So set up an agile partnerships, what should be done for all this. So there are a lot of information and coordination that is required in, in all this. I don't know whether the, this, uh, these are all there or not and so on, but I'm talking purely from a theoretical supply chain angle and this is what should be done, and it is usually done in all supply chains. So there is the vaccination logistics platform. You have actor networks, cold chain, and all that, and you have all the resources, the institutions, foreign uh, governments, regulations, WHO, NGOs, political social activists, and so on and delivery mechanisms, service logistics, center selection, and all that vaccination. This is one page view of the entire thing that we have done. So if you want to conclude, fair allocation of vaccines to countries, countries to states, states to cities, 
is more political than mathematical. Well, if you are doing, say, using, using any of these optimization methods or game theory or something, then you will do the fair vaccinations, fair vaccination selections, and so on. User friendly website 24 market services APIs allow partners to ensure safety health. This is one thing that is very important. And but there is one website where you can go and not register, but I don't think there is any other website where you can go and get all the services done. Monitoring using digital records, big data analytics as vaccination goes on, you must take care of all the effects. One thing that I would like to mention here is that this is not the end of the, uh, uh, the, the so-called pandemics. There are other pandemics that are going to come in the future. So every pandemic, every four years, there are pandemics which are coming in, like SARS has come, malaria has come, HIV has come, and also there are other things like, uh, you know, you're getting things like uh, uh, earthquakes, uh, thunderstorms and all that, they are get affecting this. And so it is very important to have uh, the monitoring of digital records. Everyone resources such as internet, cloud, mobile, big data analytics, blockchain make high impact. Now, uh, there, there should not be any problem with the internet, cloud, and so on, because that is going to affect all this. For people, this marks the beginning of the end of pandemic nightmare. And a lot of people are saying, oh, look, after getting the vaccine, I can travel, I can go over here and there and so on. But for supply chain, it is just the start because the supply chain is just starting and from there it is this one. So this is the, this is the, our, this one about, uh, and what are the research problems that I went through quickly because I want to spend some time on the research problems. Disruptions occur more frequently and it is important to be ready, future ready. So supply chains need to be redesigned as local because you know there are a lot of problems with uh, with China for all the countries. So pharma supply chains need attention in view of new viruses, deglobalization, deurbanization, etc. So this is one thing that is important. That is, all the supply chains right now, except food and pharma, got affected. They are basically, uh, 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 for example, people working from home, and all of us know all the things that that are happening in the in the industry today, and also all the travel and the uh, going to uh, going out and restaurants, they're all basically, uh, uh, they're, they're all down. So basically, you have to read the supply chains, and that is called for the new normal with digital uh, things when people work from home and so on. So that becomes one of the very important topics that young people should be uh, interested in, because how do you how do you design the supply chain using local, this one? And so far, we are using all global uh, talent. You are using global resources. You are using global logistics and so on and all that. Now, one thing I would like to mention when you are talking of logistics, in, in the US, for example, DHL and, DHL and FedEx are the ones which are using the minus 10. I don't know who is going to, uh, I know, logistics companies, which I've worked with them. I don't know which are the logistics companies which are going to be used uh, in India in this. So there is a lot of research that needs to be in the supply chain. And second thing is the industrial internet of things. Yeah, it gathers data, real-time connected devices, and edge computing, 5G, AIM to expand, IIoT reach, and potential to collect and memorize all data. You can collect the data. For example, 
In the case of vaccination, you can collect the data when the vaccine started. You can collect collect the data on the uh, on the counter when you pass in that, and when it goes to uh, goes on to a truck, it goes on to a, an airline, and it comes to finally to the hospital. And all that data you can use to trace where the, whether the vaccine is a counterfeit or not, and so on. But this means that you have to collect all this data. Now, it is not a question of data. There is a lot of data. But what data do you want to use for what supply chain? That's the biggest question. And also, there are lots of algorithms and all these technologies that are used. But the data is the problem that people are having. Because what data, how do I collect the data? Is it text? Is it um, numerical data that all of us are used to? XML and so on, or is it is, is it picture data or is it uh, or text? So basically, there are a lot of uh, data which are which are available on this from Facebook, from uh, from Google, from your emails, and all that data is collected. And so people have to work on how to get together the data, particularly in the pharma and other supply chain, food supply chains, and use the so-called blockchain to do this. And tracking and recalls. Pharma companies attach IoT tags to shipments. Each shipment assigned unique identification number. These IDs will be tied to product origins and so on. At each stage, employees can check in a product using uh, uh, the ID number blockchain securely track. Blockchains can create formal registry to identify shipments and track them at different stages in the supply chain. Using blockchain, companies can quick and product recalls. You know, product recalls are supposing you find that the vaccine is in the minus 70 degrees. It was kept for one day, 24 hours in minus 20 degrees. Then it has to be returned. So you should get Another this is that is called the product recalls and so on. So how can you using blockchain you could do this? But one problem here is that you have the IoT shipments. The the IoT tag I can take one ship one shipment one box and put an IoT tag on it, uh, saying that it has come from some this one, and that can be a fake this one. So it is very important that one has to monitor how the shipments are coming from one stage to the other. And IoT cannot solve all this, and blockchains cannot solve all the problems, but there should be some human element that should be involved in terms of the Now, the blockchain is a new, another thing is about the data. For example, you have all the data from one warehouse to another warehouse, the vaccine is going from manufacturer's warehouse to the uh, hospital's warehouse. It is a, it goes through this. And there are a lot of IT companies at this one like ERP, DMS, and other things. Now, all that you have to deconstruct and you can have what is called a control tower. I'll tell you in the next slide what the control tower is, where all this data is connected and through a smart contract so that you can have all this particular data from which is coming from different sources and use that data to make your blockchain or for the new logistics. So how do you basically do all this data. This is called edge computing and all that. A lot of uh, things that are that are happening in this. And there is a control tower. Is the one that monitors, monitors, manages, and controls decisions across companies to optimize and work using analytics. Now that means basically, if you take a uh, situation. Uh, 
like for example there is a, a uh, there is a supplier and the supplier has uh, supplier's uh, warehouse has some problem with the electricity is it possible for you to know that that supplier's warehouse has a problem and you have to get the material from somewhere else the answer is a big yes so if you share all this data so the control tower when it monitors managers it knows all this for example if you have a supplier and supplier's back fails so the supplier cannot cannot function so we have to choose another supplier and similarly this is basically it monitors manages and controls all the decisions here that's the current and it leverages existing data merge it with insights from internal system sensors i what is connected to the partner and supplier data external data such as weather geographical risk sensing viruses etc no so whatever happens when you are talking of a supply chain there are a lot of things which matter which are the weather the the also the uh, risk and also the external data the sensors iot all these things are to function properly so it adopts ai tools like machine learning and natural language processing computer vision into industry 4.0 and iot platform to leverage operational data to generate strategies and improve productivity so alerts about potential problems their root causes contributing factors makes recommendations to resolve them so basically the, it's very important that uh, particularly the vaccine supply chain has a control tower control tower because as i said you should have patients with pre problems and post problems so and after the vaccination what are the kinds of things that are uh, what is the effectiveness of the vaccination and all that so to get into all those things it is basically a control tower which collects the data it is a decision making authority that puts it in and it, it is basically shared by the entire industry the governments and so on now everybody talks of big data you know big data applications uh, for fighting covid pandemic you can have patient health records x ray ct scans infected case history outbreak uh, area information and so on and finally use this data for processing and get the diagnosis vaccine drug uh, production and so on and all that use the big data for the covid pandemic so this is one thing that you can use this is basically for the control tower and one thing that uh, uh, that i would like to say is i mentioned the word orchestration so there are several companies that are involved in this there are hospitals there are of course people there are certain state central governments jail guys and there are the staff there are logistics companies and all that they are involved but how do you bring them together to work towards this that is what orchestration's job is so there is one book by thompson which suggests coordination modes for networks of independent organizations like the vaccine chain in other words when out they they work independently they are not connected to each other they make their own life but they have to work together what do you mean first one is standardization manage companies using standardized and shared mechanisms to orchestrate transactions like traffic rules so and also that is the standardization this is in the in the covid case for example lockdowns is one thing that is a standardized tool that has been this whereas a mask 
is a standardized tool. Like this, and sanitization is a standardized tool. That's what the kind of standardization they use. And plan sequential independence require coordination to manage. For example, if you want to management of vaccine at the hospital, it requires central planners who define schedule, staff, and vaccination rules. In other words, you have the people <coughs> for pre-testing, post-testing, and all that, all those schedules. And virtual adjustment involves joint problem solving, decision making. Supposing there is an emergency situation, the vaccinator can deal with the hospital directly and share information. He need not have to go uh, to the state governor or state uh, chief minister and get the permission and all that. So these are all the governance modes. For example, what we are used to in the usual governance is article. In other words, there is a boss, big boss, and so uh, bosses and so on and all that, and people have to all these people. But in this particular case, where there are independent companies, standardization plan and mutual adjustment is the governance modes. And I think this book, I don't know whether it's available in this, uh, but uh, it is very highly referred uh, book in this. And so basically, of research problems that I have with this one. I just want to mention one thing that uh, 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 fortunately or unfortunately, I was uh, uh, involved both uh, with the product development in the vaccine in the in the pharma industry and also in the uh, 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 SARS. I was in Singapore at that time, SARS. I was with the Logistics Institute. I was made in charge for the the university to take care of uh, to standardization plans and rules and all that. And also <coughs> there was bird flu in Hyderabad. So for that, uh, one of my students has uh, has worked on the bird flu, had written a paper on this. And more importantly, one of my master's students has worked on clinical trials and the diagram that I have shown uh, is from his thesis, but unfortunately we couldn't publish that thesis because the in Singapore there was one clinical trials uh, company and those clinical trials they don't manufacture any vaccines or any drugs or anything, but they do. Once you tell them they take the task of clinical getting the clinical trials from instructions from your people and they find all the all the patients and so on from India, Indonesia, and other places and do this. So we got the data from them and that fellow is uh, Stanley Theo is his name. And he has a multi-center, multi-clinical trial in Singapore. It's an MS thesis in this one and so on. Narahari and I wrote two papers. Usha Mohan, she's a professor in IIT Madras. We worked on the industry in the poultry industry, and I worked on Indian elections 2009. And these papers are all available, except this thesis on my website. You can use them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for providing really, really mind boggling and wonderful information on this. Uh, uh orchestrating the world's largest COVID-19 <laughs> vaccinations. So what I could infer from your presentation that the entire focus till now was there on the making the vaccine ready. But more than that, now focus should be there before starting the vaccination process itself. We need sufficient time to develop this entire supply chain so that uh, whatever constraints you have uh, rightly pointed out, the most important being the temperature maintenance because uh, for each vaccine, I can see different uh, temperature requirements are there starting from two to eight degrees to minus 70 degrees from the Pfizer. And during this supply chain starting from the 
uh, factory to the reaching to the vaccination vaccinator if at any point of time uh, this chain is not properly maintained then uh, the usability of the vaccine the effectiveness of the vaccine is going to be hampered drastically so how we are going to monitor that how we are going to ensure that it is not uh, uh, this uh, temperature maintain whatever temperature is required is being maintained and if it is not being maintained what is the impact how much time is allowed to have this kind of variation suppose 5 degrees or 10 degrees kind of variation which is quite possible in india i think we are not able we may not be able to maintain the minus 70 plus minus 1 degree kind of situation so we have to see in Indian scenario, suppose a kind of uh, variation of 5 to 10 degrees is happening. What is the impact and how much time we can allow? And you have also then pointed out uh, the future technologies, how AI, blockchain, edge computing, all those things can really play a meaningful role uh, and develop a new kind of a supply chain. With these, I think uh, there is a lot more uh, focus as well as a uh, lot of funding from the government side is required to see that there is a proper supply chain is there and at every point of time, wherever vaccines are moving, what is the temperature and how it is being maintained, entire data should be available. In fact, I will go one step further before vaccine before using the vaccine and the person should be informed that vaccine started from here at this temperature and over the transportation at every point what was the temperature whether it was well within the temperature limits or not and then only uh, if he accepts that vaccine then only it is given otherwise not because this if we are not doing so, we may be playing with the life of the person who is going to be vaccinated uh, because you have already told that there are so many effects are there, post vaccination effects are there, which are not known, which will be known only when this data sets of people are going to be vaccinated. Yeah, thank you, uh, Puneet. Uh by yes take questions and then you can give your final or concluding remarks yeah about your vaccination certificate uh, travel he is asking i uh, i understand what exact Anyway, given certificate also will be given, I think, that you are being yeah, vaccinated. Yeah, also, I was suggesting digital uh, records. Yeah, yeah. Then Professor NV is giving one comment that great talk seems this must be most complex supply chain as far as constraints are concerned. which is true yeah then mr rajiv shirai is talking about what are the vaccine related constraint with respect to temperature humidity etc etc yeah but uh, i have mentioned that uh, all the vaccines what are the temperatures and so on but i don't know about the humidity but they have to be uh, maintained in proper boxes and delivered to the doctors. You must have seen on the TV that uh, they are making kits with the temperature sensitive kits and they are, they are given to the doctors before giving the, before, before giving the vaccination and so on. So, but those are all, those are all the problems that the medical uh, people can answer. But what I am interested in all this is the entire supply chain from the vaccination center before it reaches the patient or the customer in this particular case. 
So what are the kinds of uh, things that they should do? Can the vaccination be done to everybody? Now it looks to be everybody can be vaccinated. Yes. But, uh, there are special cases that the people are talking about. And after vaccination efforts, how do you keep track of all this? Yes. And more importantly, how if you keep this data, this we are getting only this COVID is only one of the uh, uh, disruptions that are going to happen to the economy, to the supply chains and all that in the future. I mean, there is some article by McKinsey which shows that every four years, this kind of uh, disruptions are going to come, whether it is in the form of vaccine, the, the virus, or it is in the form of some other thing and so on. So how do you actually live up to, so and be future ready with all this? That is where the data, AI, ML algorithms, and blockchain probably is going to be important in all this. And maintaining digital records of these vaccinations will be a starting point for future. Thank you, sir. We are going to the next question. Given the current economic and many vast data infrastructure seem relatively expensive. How do we implement this blockchain infrastructure? Yeah, yeah, it becomes it becomes uh, very difficult to, to have the, the this kind of infrastructure and get all the data and so on. But everybody almost has this uh, Aadhaar card. So if the Aadhaar card is supposed to be is digital, is it is digitized, and it is there on the cloud, so you can enter uh, uh, the the patient's uh, record on the on the cloud and so on. So but it is very important, whether it is expensive or inexpensive, very important to keep track of the vaccine, their temperatures, where they go, and whether it is counterfeit or not, otherwise it's affecting people's lives. And one question that I didn't raise is, who is going to pay for the vaccine? That question has some of the state governments said that the vaccine is free for people, but some state governments didn't say anything. So it's I don't know whether the insurance companies can pay for the vaccine. Puneet, you're on mute. Okay, sorry. So Naranan, sir, you can go, you can ask your question. And uh, being a panel member, you can always uh, directly ask question and you can have uh, comment, you can provide your comment also on the oh, thank you, Professor Vishwanathan. Um, salutations to you. Thank you very much for the extremely brilliant uh, presentation and very comprehensive, very eye-opening. Um, so one question that I had is um, regarding all these IT systems. Um, you mentioned about APIs. Now, with all this um, orchestration and uh, digital flow, there also seems to be a need for interoperability between, um, you know, health departments of various countries and the IT infrastructure around the vaccination, right? Because there's a supply chain that comes globally, and <clears throat> there's also a need to track the efficacy and the effectiveness and side effects collectively across um yeah you know a, a very disparate population uh, your thoughts on that professor yeah actually this as i mentioned this uh, you know uh, maintaining a control tower and the control tower has a, uh, has this uh, it, it collects the data from various places and also does this kind of thing unified the uh, companies countries whatever whoever is involved and particularly the suppliers of vaccine and the patients and the countries and the doctors and so on. So, for all this. So, I mean, the data becomes very important. As I said, there are algorithms, but the data becomes important. 
what data to collect for who. You know, if I'm a, if I'm a vaccine company, I'm not interested in all the data. So I'm interested in, in some kind of data. And if I'm a logistics company, I'm interested in, in, in a set of the data. If I'm the government, I'm interested in some other data. So you have the data at various places and how to collect the data, what is the, the data, how do you use the blockchain? These are all big questions. Okay. And given the global nature, Professor, of this pandemic, I mean, uh, how uh, it, do you feel that orchestrating all of this could be perhaps part of WHO or somebody else? Uh, because it requires a lot of cooperation between governments. Not true, but then, uh, you know, WHO um, may not be able to each, each country is, is doing things by itself. And right now, of course, uh, there seems to be a lot of cooperation in terms of vaccine production, but I don't know whether the cooperation will continue in terms of uh, the other issues and so on. So, but also the data, the, uh, the data that is being collected, particularly the, the vaccines, health and so on, is private information. In other yes. words, it's for the customer. That private data, I don't think it can be globally shared, but uh, you have to use edge computing to say, see what the data to be used and all that. But uh, these technologies need to be developed. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, uh, Professor Hari. Would you like to have some observation or any questions from uh, Professor Vishwanatham? Uh, okay, thank you, Puneet. Uh, Mr. Vishwanatham, it was a very, very interesting talk. Uh, I learned many new things which I was not aware of. Uh, so I have one question. Uh, are there any uh, projections of, uh, based on the, uh, let us assume the capacity of vaccine production in India, because India is a... Uh, Uh, do you have data that, okay, let us assume that the vaccine is manufactured in India. How long would it take uh, to, let's say, vaccinate uh, maybe 50% of our population? Are there any projections? Uh, actually, I know uh, Bharat uh, Bi Biotech, uh, uh, you know, Krishna Ella is the chairman of this. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. So I was talking to him and so he was asking me, can we develop, uh, you know, a blockchain uh, 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 logistic system for, for vaccine biotech, but they are not sure when the third clinical trials are going to be completed. So, and one thing is, is, is true, but the, uh, I don't think they are going to share, for example, if you take any of these vaccines, which are made in, in the US or UK or something like Pfizer, I don't think any of those uh, things are going to allow manufacturers in India to manufacture them. They are going to, uh, for example, Hyderabad airport and uh, and Delhi airport are ready to receive these vaccines. So the government seems to be uh, prepared for importing these vaccines and be uh, and do this, but I don't know uh, when Bharat Biotech uh, and uh, AstraZeneca's vaccines are going to be ready. They are not uh, any, uh, there is nothing uh, 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 in the public. Okay, one more question. Uh, but what about other accessories like uh, syringes, uh, PPE kits? Do we have enough capacity to? Uh, launch yeah. ourselves into a large vaccination campaign because you need uh, at least multiple syringes for each patient yeah i think so actually patient. actually those those are those are being manufactured in india so syringes there are companies which are manufacturers in just ppes and all that and that can be done in india only thing is the vaccine need to come from abroad otherwise okay. there is no the other accessories and also the doctors, now the medical staff, and also uh, the places to do this. But what I'm confused about is pre testing and post testing. Nobody is talking about them. They're talking about vaccination centers. 
and thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Puneet, I, I'm, I'm done. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So I think we could uh, complete all the questions. And uh, you, uh, you see, sir, uh, we thought that we will be having uh, a one hour session, but we have exceeded uh, almost now one hour, 15 minutes of your time. <laughs> And you have given really wonderful insights about the entire, uh, I can see first time I have heard that how there is a supply chain in the vaccination, how, uh, what are the constraint uh, already existing at least in India. And I think uh, it is not only in India, it may be the situation across world also. Uh, I don't think uh, there are any, uh, data sets available for the temperature over the entire supply chain, uh, which is the need of the hour, at least for this particular vaccine. So if we are able to develop those technologies in India and successfully implement the way we have done uh, Aadhaar card implementation, so I think it will be a technology which entire globe can use. And what you have rightly said that this is going to be the need for effective vaccination and implementation, at least in India, because temperature variations across India is, are so varied, uh, we cannot guarantee that if a uh, vaccine is moving from one place to other place, we are not having temperature variations and uh, effectiveness of the vaccine is ensured. With these yeah. words, thank you very much, sir. If you would like to have any concluding remarks, Please provide us and then we can end this session. Yeah, I mean, basically, thanks very much for uh, uh, for uh, uh, listening to my presentation here. Uh, so as always, uh, I am working from home. I'm working alone. So I think uh, now getting some feedback from people and also talking to people is a is a great uh, this one both health wise as well as my work wise here and of course i i this is the first time i'm seeing hurry last one after one year <laughs> <laughs> although i talk to him frequently <laughs> so uh, this is this is what is what is happening uh, in terms of this and if the students or anybody has any questions uh, I, they have my email and they can go to my website. If you type uh, and dot Vishwanadam, you will get everything and they can talk to me. And I'm, I will be very happy if a lot of research on big data, AIML, and this is service chain, supply chains, and these things are done and shared with the entire world. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And thank you, Professor Hari, for connecting me with Professor Vishwanathan for this wonderful session, because of you only, we could have this uh, information. And I think in entire, this is this being the first uh, webinar, I have released for IEEE members, and uh, most of them, they are going to be benefited with the perspective what Professor Vishwanathan has provided. And uh, I will say, the research openings, what he has told, where India should be working in near future, where our IT technology people as well as ML data scientists and blockchain enthusiasts are experts, they should be working to the real benefit of humanity, which I can say as far as IEEE tagline is concerned. So these are the areas we should immediately start working towards that and help the nation as well as humanity. With these words, I would like to thank one and all. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. We will meet soon again with one, some wonderful lectures from one of the esteemed panelists uh, in coming future. Thank you very much. Would you take a snap? I took already. Okay. <laughs> one more I will do. Okay. Thank you, sir. I will share with thank you soon. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Brother. Thank you, Hari. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hari. Good night. Thank you all. Good night.